everyone. Today we on the Facings live stream, Facings podcast, Facings NFTs head on. We are talking with Josh Balls with the Strange and Unusual collection. Josh is a longtime collector uh, in the physical space, and we are super, super excited at Facings to help him launch his first ever NFT set. So Josh, would you mind saying a few words about yourself? Um, yeah, well, I'm Josh Balls. I own the Strange and Unusual with, along with many other things that I do because I'm a crazy person. But no, I think, uh, I mean, I have a, a very vast personal collection that I'm very excited to bring over into the, the um, I guess, the digital atmosphere, which is going to be amazing. Absolutely. So um, we have, you know, a bunch of folks in the audience, so we're going to get questions from them. But just to get started, I wanted to learn a little bit more about you as a collector. So, you know, like, both of our friends, um, Lars, who's on the Facings team, um, Lars is a good friend of Josh, and he's known you for a long time, and he's told me a lot about your crazy, crazy collection, um, your flamethrowers, you know, faces in a jar, <laughs> shit like that. And I, I was just wondering, like, how did this get started? Like, were, were you walking around as a toddler, just, you know, picking up rat skulls, putting them in jars? Like, so you're saying, did when did I become a professional weirdo, is what you're asking? So, um, or, or a hobbyist weirdo, that works too. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, 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 it stemmed back from my childhood, kind of. My dad used to listen to, like, heavy rock, metal kind of stuff. And um, he was always, he had big skulls tattooed on him. And he had, like, he had tattoos and things like that. So, from a young age, I gravitated towards skulls and the alternative and things like that. And I just wanted to... I remember the first thing I, I saw uh, that I was like, oh, man, I want to start collecting stuff like this is my dad came home with this just giant metal knight. And I was like, this is cool, like medieval, like weird, like swords and stuff. And I was like, um, just Casually like. Casually comes home with a knight. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> um, so it kind of stemmed from my, from my father and just like him being a, you know, a, a, honestly, just a badass. And I was like, man, I want to be like him. He's cool. Like, I want to. I want to have skulls like he has. I, I wanted to, I want I used to want like the same tattoos he had, he had on him. And yeah. it was, it was, it was awesome. But that grew into, you know, me being in a band and which was a, uh, you know, a metal rock band, Motionless and White, um, which I'm not with anymore. But when I was on tour, I would always go to local shops and I'd always try to find whatever was the weirdest thing that they had in the shop. Cause I was like, well, this is interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to like, cause we'd play an hour a day, but we'd be on tour for 24 hours a day. So I try to have to figure out how to do that time. So I'd be like, I would go to these little local shops and try to find the weirdest thing in that shop. So what happened is that I kept growing my collection and growing my collection. I was like, I need to do something with this stuff. So that's when the strange and unusual was born. Awesome. So um, the concept for the strange and unusual, was it initially just like, Hey, I want to share my collection with the world and have people look at it. Or was it supposed to be, you know, an actual store from day one? Like I want people to buy this stuff. No, it was like I wanted to. We we actually I toyed around with making it a museum at first, but we didn't have like the financing or like the the backing to be able to figure that out. So I was like, oh, you know, well, first up, we'll just do a we'll do a store. I'll do a store and just kind of throw it out there. Oh, by the way, hey Bill, Bill's in the chat. Bill's great. Um, hey Bill. Um, but no, it's one of those things where it's it it, it kind of just it, it was a very organic growth into what it is, and it was kind of just like hey, let's try this out and let's figure out how it's going to go. And it just stuck. And honestly, it's been eight years, I think, since we've opened a physical location. Wow. And it's been – and people told me not to. They're like, you're crazy for opening retail. And I was like – and now it's like my biggest source of income, which is crazy. I quit the band, which was, you know, a very a very big uh, uh, rock metal band. Um, and yeah. I went full-time strange, which is amazing. That is so cool. So out of everything that you currently have in your collection, is there one item that is the favorite child or do you love them all equally? Um, I mean, a person like a personal item to me is, is my dog Casper, which, you know, yeah. a, a spoiler you will see in this NFT collection, which is amazing. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Am I allowed to? <laughs> You're allowed to say that. Yeah. Um, so yes, you'll see my, my dog Casper who passed away. He was 16 years old. We rescued him. He was the love of my life. He was blind. So it was like, he was my baby, you know? Aww. So I actually, um, got him freeze dried, uh, which is a form of basically a form of taxidermy, but it's a little bit more lifelike, um, because you don't have to like make a mold. It's, 
Um, some yeah. people think it's it's fucking weird, but uh, I it's it's crazy. Like after a while, it took me like six months, six to eight months to realize that like I was able to even look at him. But now I'm just so happy he's in my collection. And as a not personal thing, I have a face in a jar, which spoiler again, you will see in this collection is my uh, my second favorite thing. So, um, but yeah, number one is definitely my dog because it's it means so much to me. Awesome. So um, I have a slightly less cool collection, um, and it includes my pet Lectochinus variegatus. Oh. It's did a you, variegated sea urchin. Did you preserve it yourself? <laughs> yes, I did about 10 years ago when I was also a very weird child. <laughs> Fair. How old are you? Um, I'm in my 20s. Okay, so you were so really young not really a child, it. but... <laughs> that's, yeah, that's still yeah. crazy. <laughs> Um, what did you preserve it in? Um, so I initially preserved it in ethyl alcohol, and then I had to add some other stuff over the years to, you know, keep it tidy. Yeah, which is, so a, a lot of people, uh, there, so there is ways to preserving things. It's like one 70% isopropyl alcohol is like a go-to, but it won't last okay. forever. So what you have to do is you have to mm. fix it, you have to fix it in formalin. But a thing like a sea creature, a sea creature is a little different. It doesn't break down as much as a like a, a mammal, if you might. But um, but usually if you if you want to do it like correctly, so it'll last a hundred years, is um, you have to you have to fix it in formalin. So first, and then once it you have like a if you do like a month in formalin even, and then just switch it over to seventy percent isopropyl alcohol is is the way to go. So. Make sure you keep it, if you change out the liquid, keep it 70% isopropyl alcohol. Because if you go above that to 90%, it'll decompose the flesh of the, the specimen. Yeah. Thank you so much for that consulting, Josh. Everyone in the <laughs> audience, I hope you had your pens and paper out because that is how you preserve sea creatures. That is how you preserve your critters. So, you know, we've talked a little bit about collecting in general. And I wanted to move over to the strange, unusual NFT set. So... You know, in our in some of our prayer conversations, conversations with Lars, like I know that you really wanted to make, uh, you know, collecting oddities something that's like everyone. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about like the vision behind uh, and like the motivation behind the FT set? Yeah, I mean, one, I want to answer that question for Michelle is. Um, oh heck yeah! That a mix of so many interests is hard to know what time to, to how to spend your time focusing on the most on. It's honestly just organization is it. And then I put everything in and kind of, oh, I'm, I'm a crazy person. So I do, I make sure I do everything hundred percent or nothing at all. So that's how you answer that question is organization. But honestly, with the NFT collection, I wanted to, so you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head for sure. It's, it's one of those things where I, so that head in a jar cost me $8,000. Like I'm, that's, I'm, I'll tell that as public knowledge. Like it, it was $8,000. Yeah. So it was like, some people don't have $8,000, but to be able to own the asset of it for, you know, what, what are our pack prices? Let's start at that. Like, you know, do you know the pack prices? Yeah. So are we allowed to say the pack? See, I don't want to, I see if you say it, I don't get in trouble. So we, <laughs> okay. So I'd have to pull up the medium article real quick because like, I, I know one of the ones that was being discussed, but I want to make sure I get the most up-to-date one. So um, I believe it's, I believe there's two packs. I think there's a $15 pack and a $30 pack and you can own a, so you can own a part of my collection for $15, which is absurd, you know, and, and have very, very, so Lars took all the pictures for this. So everything is very high quality. Um, there are some crafting pieces in it. There are some redeemables, which is amazing. So it's one of those things. Yeah. See, Rob said uh, $15 and $30. So to be able to be able to spend $15 or $30 and own a piece of my collection that is never going to leave my collection, which is also amazing, is is something so unique. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it gives people the option to be a part of my collection. Like, and, and I think that's so it's, – when, when Lars was telling me about it, I was like, this is a no-brainer. This is amazing to be able to have a, a you know, have that piece of art that is you – know, we're basically – we're sharing a collection at that point, which is cool. So I, it's a connection yeah. – to you know, to my fans, to to other people, to fans of the strange and unusual, to fans of everything, and you know, uh, and also it's I love I love the way everything came out. I mean, there's the packs alone. I mean, there's the the dearly pack and the beloved pack. So it's the dearly beloved, which is un honestly amazing. It's so like everything down, every detail is perfect in this entire set. So it, it's it's crazy, but yeah, to be able to own a part of the collection for fifteen thirty dollars is 
it's crazy. You know, I don't want to, I want, I don't want to go out the gate and be like, this NFT is $200,000. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's, so we, I wanted to make it accessible for all of the people that want to get into NFTs because I'm new to NFTs too. Like it's, I mean, it's been like a a year or so that I've been dabbling and, and things like that. So I'm still learning and I want other people to know that it's okay to, you know, and for $15, you can be like, I can do this. This is cool. And also, um, you don't just have to have crypto. You don't have to, you know, it's on, it's on the wax, it's on wax, but you can also use a credit card to buy it, which is new, which is amazing. So, cause I was talking to a friend yesterday and he was like, I can't, I don't have any ether. I don't have it. You know, I don't know what to do. And I was like, mm-hmm. actually, you just have to make a wax account and use your credit card. And that's makes life a thousand times easier. So you're not like stressing out about buying any kind of, you know, coins or anything like that. Yeah, like more than a thousand times easier. I can't tell you like how many people have been like, oh my God, credit cards. Okay, sign me up versus like it being pretty much impossible, uh, especially for non-technical people. Yeah. Absolutely. So what was the experience like photographing this collection with Lars? Um, It was great. I mean, I, I, Lars has been a friend for such a long time and he's, he, the, what I liked about it is, you know, when we were working on this whole set is I literally gave, I was like, I trust Lars with, cause we have very similar, uh, visual, like us visually are like exactly the same. So we get it. So I was like, yeah, I knew he was the right person to do it. And I knew it was great. So like the entire, the, uh, the entire situation was a no brainer. It was super easy. Like we just hung out. Honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't work. It wasn't anything. We we're just like, Hey, let's go, uh, let's go shoot some dead stuff. And then we, it was funny because you see all this stuff is so high end, but I hate, I, I'm, I'm going to, I hope is Lars in this chat or you can be sleeping. Um, honestly, he's probably like whipping up some art, awesome PR art stuff right now. Cause he, okay, he good. Was I'm going to rat him. Stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to rat him out. We, um, when we were shooting this stuff, he forgot some stuff for his camera. So like he had, he brought like some like hardware for his camera. So like, if you saw behind the camera, what we were shooting, like we had, um, we had, uh, the backdrop was like taped up to things and his camera had paint cans holding and we were doing like, a, like weighted to keep it. It was, it was honestly, if you saw a picture of behind the scenes versus what actually came out was insane. Yeah. There was like outside of the thing was like duct tape and paint cans, like, uh, balancing his camera. So it didn't move. It was honestly amazing what he can do. And just watching him work is so amazing. So uh, it yeah. was it was awesome, but it, it's it, it came out it came out way better. I was like I knew it was gonna be good, but I knew it was gonna be great. You know, it was like it's like every time he sent me a picture, I was like, motherfucker, this is so good. <laughs> I know Lars Lar- is just absolutely genius when it comes to photography. Anyone in the audience, if you don't know what dark pinup is, it's a genre that Lars created. Go Google it. No, dark pinup is like amazing and the thing is like he uses a lot of natural light which most people don't do and i think that's so important that he's cap he captures the natural feel of the room with just his camera a human and the things that are just on around him he's just he's very very talented and he's been talented for so long you know ever since he was you know doing backyard wrestling in in, in 2002 <laughs> to now being a you know an nft pro so it's watching his growth has been amazing um but yeah also in the chat uh are, is that you typing are you facings so i am facings yeah so okay. i uh just shared that the 15 um dollar pack has half of the cards of the 30 dollar pack just as okay. an fyi well that makes sense so yeah it's just math um so if we have any questions from the audience let's hear them as people are typing, um, I have one final question for you, Josh. Yes. How do you know Doug Bradley? How did you guys connect? And how um, is he involved with this set? I actually met Brett, Doug Bradley through uh, one of my best friends own a, owns a clothing company called Bra- Blackcraft Clothing. His name is Bobby Shavinsky. He's like one of my best friends that's ever existed in this world. Um, and he did a thing called Blackcraft Wrestling. Um, and so Doug was actually the the face of dark of Blackcraft uh, wrestling. So when we were doing Twitch, he actually brought Doug on as a guest on our other channel, um, the space Zebra channel. And 
me and Doug clicked like immediately. Like we, like we, we talked for like two hours straight on stream. It was just like, there was four of us in the, in the, in the stream and me and Doug talked for literally two hours straight. And then afterwards we just, you know, we just talked back and forth, talked back and forth and we became like really, really good friends. Um, so it's, it was like one of those things where it was like, it was unreal. It was like really weird. Like, yeah. cause I talk, I mean, I've been in the music Especially industry Especially if so he's long. talking at you in the Doug Bradley voice. <laughs> it's it's crazy so we we were so we were um what was i saying shit um oh yeah so i'm I'm friends yeah yeah so i'm i'm in the music world so i meet all like these music people i'm not like starstruck like because i but i toured for 10 years and did great things and fun things with amazing people but i never got into the movie world like meeting actors and stuff Mm -hmm. so it was crazy becoming friends with a horror icon who is Doug Bradley. Uh, if you guys don't know who Doug Bradley is, he is Pinhead from Hellraiser, which is one of the most iconic horror movies of all time. Um, and when me and Lars were talking about the set, we're like, oh man, we should get someone to narrate a section of the set. And I was like, he's like, because I'm friends with, uh, he's like, what do we think about Dee Snyder? Because I'm friends with Dee Snyder, who is uh, the singer of Twisted Sister. And I was like, oh man, that'd be awesome. But I mean, we're releasing a lot around Halloween and I was like, I think I can do one a little bit, not saying better because I love D. He's, a, he's an amazing human being. I used to call him my goth father because he treats me so, so well. That. Um, and I was like, what if we asked Doug Bradley? He's like, how are you going to do that? And I was like, hold on. And I was like, I was like, done. So having Doug narrate the set, the a, a part of the set is insane. It's amazing. It's one of those things where, so I, when I got the files, First of all, he did it in like five seconds, which is un- unheard of. It's like a huge thing. There's like 13, can I say how many? Yeah, yeah. The So let me send um, everyone the Medium article that outlines all of the like set odds so you can look at that as well. But yeah, feel free to share. Uh, everything so I here. think, so I think he's narrating 13 of, uh, of the set and they all have like very like medical uh the descriptions are like very like insane um and then as he i was like i sent it to him on on like a tuesday and he's i was like i was expecting it to be like maybe it's gonna take a few days and by the next morning he had the entire thing laid out done in different files like he sent me an mp3 he sent me a wave and i was like holy shit i listened to it and i like i freaked out because yeah he's my friend but still he's like He's he's an. He's icon, also Doug so Bradley. He's yeah. Doug Bradley. He's like, uh, so he's 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 a, a literal legend and icon. And I sent it to Lars, and he freaked out. He called me. He's like, this is so crazy. He's like, to be and and it's funny because one of the things he narrates is, uh, I have a pair. I have a set of plastinated human testicles. So to hear Doug oh Bradley God. say, <laughs> honestly, buy the set just to hear Doug Bradley say testicles because it was literally when I heard him say it, I was like, oh my God, I made Doug Bradley say testicles. I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. Making anyway. internet so, history. Yeah. So it was it was funny and I, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, it, it's it's just one of those things that makes this set not only where it was already at the top, now to a fucking through the atmosphere, you know? Yeah. So I see a few questions in here about how to get started with NFTs. Um, So let me put up this page. So cards.thestrangeunusual.com is where you'll be able to purchase these. We have um, an FAQ page going up very soon that will provide you everything you need to know about how to, um, you know, get a wax wallet, which is needed to put the NFTs in. Um, how to purchase with your credit card, all of that. So we like to make it pretty easy. So um, we should have everything you need there. But if you ever have any questions, we also have a support line um, and are always happy to answer. It is crazy how easy, I I didn't realize how easy it was until I started diving into it. And it's great. It's like three things. You make a wax, you make a wax wax wallet and you purchase it. I mean, that's, that's basically it. There's not really like too much about it and it's it's super simple and you know for the people that i'm sure that are in this chat you know like michelle and, and them it's just it's a lot more easier than you think so don't think it's daunting to try to buy one and, and it's cool it's and that's why i made it the, the that's why we made these so affordable is so people that are introing into nfts have that chance to be able to um to have them this is a good starter pack for not only is it a great starter pack it's a great like 
advanced pack too because it's so many unique mm -hmm. things that have never been uh on the ns nft atmosphere before which is incredible you know so not only are you going to be a part of something amazing but it's going to be accessible which i you know be, from me I, I grew up as a very poor kid and so to be able to give back is is so important to me um and to make them affordable it's 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 amazing so it's 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 super easy super and literally the entire facings team will help anybody and everything with with uh with any questions that anybody has to ask and and mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's something you should definitely get into absolutely cool so um we have about nine minutes left so if you have any final questions for josh please drop them in the chat um but Josh, do you have anything else that you'd like to share about the collection? Uh, maybe like maybe a bit about the tarot cards and the story behind that. Um, I just got a text. It just drove me. Um, so the tarot okay. cards are cool. So it's like when 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 you get a set, you're going to be able to get tarot cards in the set as well. Um, so you're basically getting your own personal reading inside of a set, which is crazy. I think it's it's one of those things that's it's unique. It it, it makes it it makes it more of an experience inside mm -hmm. of the set instead of just being like, Hey, you get this picture, you know, you don't just get, you know, you get a, a, an, an insane asset and you get things that go along with those assets that make an experience. So it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's one of a kind. It's so important to be able to offer those experiences and, you know, having tarot cards in them to have your own personal reading basically inside of a pack is so crazy, you know, and, and, and it's, I hope they get done today, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they will, they will. Um, so another cool thing about the tarot card or the tarot, tarot cards, I'm literally pronouncing it like a noob. I apologize everyone. You know, I, I own a bar. I, I own a bar. <laughs> I own a bar in Scranton. And we have a drink called the tarot. And yeah. you have no idea how many people call it the tarot. And I'm like, oh, I know. no. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Um, but, but anyways, um, for anyone who is, um, you know, a little bit more advanced with NFTs, you probably know about this thing called crafting. So crafting is when you take uh, one NFT or multiple NFTs and um, you um, can't, or even more than that, um, and you could combine them into something else. So um, the tarot cards, uh, really cool aspect of those is you can actually um, on the cards dot the strange and unusual dot com combine them um, into new rarer cards and some of them will even be redeemable for physical items including t-shirts what other items josh um so you get you can get uh percentages off your sales you can get t-shirts mm -hmm. you can get so that that was the one of the cool thing is is redeemables are so are, are are crazy because now you can take this digital asset and you can actually redeem it in person which is crazy so it's not only are you getting, you're getting a full circle, which is crazy and amazing. Yeah. So it's, you can get, you know, I am working on an exclusive facing strange, unusual shirt for that redeemable, um, which Ooh. is going to be great. So it's, a, it's going to be a one of a kind t-shirt that you get only for um, it's only going to be available for people that, that get the NFTs that are, be, are able to craft into a redemption, which is amazing. Yeah. So Michelle, yes. So if you sign up on that website, then you will get alerts um, for when the page goes live. Um, it will be going live on Friday um, in the morning Eastern time. So I I'm not sure off the top of my head if anyone wants to drop the actual time it goes live. I think it's 10 a.m. 1 p.m. Sure. Eastern. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm shocked that people are awake and here on a Wednesday. <laughs> I'm sure there's not a ton of you, but Michelle and Bill and all you guys for coming up and and hanging out that's we that's amazing uh austin hi how is it going um but i was i was super nervous i was like man who's gonna be up at at, <laughs> at 11 well not even up like people have jobs it is wednesday so i'm very excited that there's people here um but i think i'm i'm super excited for this and i know friday's coming up soon and we have we still have some work to do which is i'm actually getting texts right now about the set for the thing so uh, see look i'm at work on break see you're the best it's only 8 a.m Pacific man, people are you guys are crazy. I'd be dedicated, sleeping. dedicated. <sighs> Love you guys. Um, but no, I mean it, it's it's just it's it's a one of a kind set that I don't think is going to be able to be matched unless we do another set. 
That's true. That's true. I mean, you have pretty much infinite items in your collection, so there's more than enough to make second sets, third sets. Yeah, I actually, I, I bought a bunch of stuff since then. So, I mean, I'm just going to keep oh growing my, my collection and we'll just keep doing, yes. you know, I, I think it's going to do really well. I think the people that are going to um, acquire the set are going to be so, so excited about it. And, you know, and I think people that don't know what the Strange and Unusual is that find out about the Strange and Unusual via NFT uh, on, on Atomic Hub or in, with Wax, it's going to be, it's going to be one of those sets that are going to be, I think you're going to be remembered for a long time because it's so unique. And this collection isn't drawn. It isn't a graphic design. It is pictures of the actual items in my collection, which yeah. makes it so much, so much different, so much more rare to me is I, even like the human testicles. I'm like, I think I'm one of the only people that own a set of plastinated human testicles in anywhere. So it's, to be able to own that as well for fifteen or thirty dollars, it's a steal. A steal. <laughs> a steal. Yeah. Cool. So thank you all so 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 much for attending. Thank you, Josh, for being here. Um, if you're not already, please follow Josh on Twitter. Here's his details, and we're on Twitter as well. So if you want updates on all the newest drops, join us there as well. Yes, thank you. Look at all these people are in the chat. Hi, Rob. Who's going to corner the testicle market on wax? Rob, we are. It's going to be Josh. Um, Michelle, I'll see you at Aftershock. Um, Ninja Vanish, you're amazing. I, I've seen you in my other chats. You're the best. Oh, you see me at Aftershock. Amazing. I'm actually flying out today. Like, that's why we had to do this so early is I have to jump. I know. I thank leave. you so much. Yeah. Like, we really appreciate you being here just a few hours before you have to fly out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heck, we didn't even cover it. What are you doing the remainder of this week, Josh? Oh, so one, I am releasing a... Hey, Lars, answer the text message. Did you answer me? I just saw Lars come in. Uh, that'll Faces work. Love you have you. Or just a series of photos. Oh, uh, Lars, you did answer me. That's good. So we're finishing one of the, one of the last things. Um, yeah. I am I'm going to... One, on Friday, we'll be releasing an NFT collection. Um, but I will be in Sacramento, California at Aftershock Festival. Um, uh, I do a live stream with a with uh, DWP, who is a huge concert promoter. We do we go live, we interview bands, we talk to bands, we do we basically cover the festival and do things like that. So you know we'll be basically in front of a, a you know in person maybe uh, like a hundred thousand people, and then on like digitally we'll be in front of probably five hundred thousand people. So it's one of those things. It's 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 interesting and aaron i will not make an nft of my hair aaron is one of my business partners in a company i actually own a root beer company as well with one of the guys in the chat his name is aaron brooke um he's it. actually he's the bass player of breaking benjamin i don't know if you guys have heard that band oh yeah um, that's amazing yeah they're, yeah they're shit um so even <sighs> though we won't have an nft of your hair i mean an nft of your skull is also pretty baller that's true. I actually got, so here's the thing with the NFT of school. I actually have it on a disc. Lars, I have it on a disc right now. I don't have a disc drive. I have to go find a disc drive, download it, and send it to you, Lars, just so you know. Um, it's, it's on its way. I'm, I'm getting <laughs> off the stream. The I'm gonna sh yeah, I have to get off the stream. I have to shower. I have to pack and then go to my office to hopefully download this. I, so it's, it was crazy. I went in to get x-rays of my skull. Uh, because I've had some 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 noggin issues, um, so you know because we wanted to you know give people the full Josh balls is we are taking those X rays and turning them into NFTs. NFTs. Of, it's funny because <laughs> the lady's like you? the lady's like can you take your piercings out and I was like no because now people will know it's me. So she left them in. So you'll see my piercings in the X rays of my skull. And it's awesome. Is that safe? Don't, don't no, you probably have to, not. Like, remove metal. Okay. I'm probably gonna. I'm, I'm probably gonna die today. So, hey, make sure you guys buy this. We did it for costume. you all. <laughs> yes, buy the set. <laughs> to pay for my uh, to pay for my funeral, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, <laughs> well, well, we're about bottom of the hour. So, thank you all so much for being here. Um, thank you, Josh. Please have a safe flight and. We're really looking forward to the launch on Friday and to catch all of your uh, your streams at the festival. It's going to be a crazy weekend and I'm 
so excited for it. Heck yeah. And yes, Lars, please take a picture of my corpse if I die. Absolutely. For <laughs> set two. <laughs> set two. Set two post-mortem. Exactly, exactly. Cool. Well, thank you all. Thank you all. Um, tune into the next Facings live stream next week, Wednesday. Uh, Lars is actually going to hey, be our guest. Subscribe to this and channel. Subscribe. Yes. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye.